Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, we've got a fine uh, early winter day here in Huntsville. She's supposed to get to 65 today, so everybody out there freezing to death, I'm sorry. Also, uh, I think some of the early advertisement for this uh, showed that uh, Sherry House would be doing this presentation. Uh, unfortunately, we shipped Sherry off to Alabama DOT for the week uh, so she could uh, do some support down there, and so you're stuck with me. Also, uh, I owe uh, a couple of slaps across the forehead to my buddy, Mr. David Fagerman. He wrote the description for this activity. And if I do everything that uh, David put in that description, then I'm going to sound like Alvin of the Chipmunks up here running so fast. So we'll, we'll get as far as we can, and uh, we'll probably do a uh, part two and maybe even a part three uh, on this introduction to uh, Storm and Sanitary. So hold on, and we'll try to go at a pace that you can all keep up. Today's agenda, we're going to start from the very beginning, take a look at what it takes to, uh, to do product setup, uh, we're going to lay out a couple of um, small networks. We will uh, do some modifications to that network, uh, cut some profiles, do some design and analysis, and uh, we'll finish up doing some reporting on the small networks that uh, we lay out. So, getting started. The first thing to realize is that Storm and Sanitary is a self-contained product in itself. Its only prerequisites are a CAD engine to run on, a uh, microstation, or if you insist, AutoCAD, but uh, being a good Bentley citizen, uh, microstation is one you want to run on. Uh, it will, if available, uh, consume any deliverables that En-ROADS provides, such as the XIN files from En-ROADS, the DTM, uh, ALG profiles, anything that you generate within En-ROADS, Storm and Sanitary can use. Uh, it also provides both a uh, combined storm and sanitary sewer system or a just storm or just sanitary and we'll look at that in a minute and then we also have various options some options are controlled from within inroads uh, which are the generic options that apply to all of the inroads applications and some options are drainage specific so we will take a look at a few of those items and let's flip over to the product uh, and if you notice at the uh, top of the uh, the dialog box for the En-ROAD Storm and Sanitary is where my cursor is moving to there. We are running at this point in time just Storm and Sanitary. And to kind of give you an idea of some of the commands that are available within Storm and Sanitary, you have your standard um, open uh, project defaults, uh, text import wizards, uh, things like that, translators that you have in all of the En-ROAD suite products. Uh, when you look at um, DTM capabilities within the product, then primarily what the um, uh, intent of the product is provide you all the ability to, to view any type of DTM work that you want to and to analyze any type of DTM, but not uh, sophisticated editing type tools um, other than some that are associated particularly with uh, channels. Uh, again, the same type philosophy is followed in the geometry area where primarily we look at being able to view and consume um, uh, alignments and use alignments for layout, uh, but, uh, but not being able to do sophisticated editing uh, within the product. And of course, drainage is where we will spend most of our time today looking at drainage commands. And then in the evaluation is where we place the uh, create profile, uh, uh, cross-section commands, uh, the uh, annotate and tools like that. Uh, and then some of the drafting notes and some general tools as far as that's concerned. And we will come back and um, uh, before we get started creating a lot of things and we will actually come back in and show you a way that you can actually create alignments using a combination of uh, Storm and Sanitary and MicroStation as well as DTMs but uh, not done uh, inside of the uh, coordinate geometry engine of uh, En-ROADS itself. But we will cover that as we move along. So first thing that we want to do, and as I always do in a uh, remote lecture, I have built a uh, custom toolbar that kind of goes through our workflow that we're going to see. And as you notice, if I slide over each one of the items, you'll get a glyph. tells you that's the menu system, that's the drainage options, uh, that's the drainage structures file, uh, different tools like that. So I always try to give you a workflow menu that if you want to follow along in what I've done, uh, you can use the workflow. But again, all the, menu, all the commands are available as well from the pull downs. First time I use the command, I'll try to go down through the pull down so you see where that is located within the product itself. Uh, second time, I will use my custom menu and do it a little bit quicker uh, fashion. So um, let's take a look first at options. And the first group of options that I want to look at is just standard inroads options. So let's pull up just our tools 
options command from En-ROADS. Now this is the common option um, command within all of the En-ROADS product. This is where for all the products you will set such things as precision. And if you notice down in the cubic units, I have bumped the unit up uh, very large. Uh, we're looking at a very small residential area, so my flows are going to be uh, pretty small, so I need three to four decimal places to uh, see what our flows are going to be in with this. And then as we do things like stationing, uh, as we do elevation queries, tracking, and things like that, uh, these type of uh, information we generated are controlled by the standard uh, options underneath uh, the, the En-ROADS tools. And also, uh, as far as whether you're using an easting, northing, northing, easting, uh, preferred preferences, all of these standard type settings along that way. Also, your units are controlled from the standard options uh, within the, uh, the entire suite. Also, underneath the geometry tab, there are a couple of things there that um, as you start to uh, maybe import from graphics or uh, uh, want to um, uh, do some of your um, uh, microstation combination with uh, SNS type commands, this is where you will control a lot of those type tools within, uh, within the, the uh, products. Again, these are the generic options. If you are an En-ROADS user or an En-ROADS site user, uh, you're uh, familiar with these. You probably use these quite a bit, and uh, they are no different. As a matter of fact, you got all the same options. Uh, you even see a tab for rail uh, if you are a rail user, and I see that we do have a number of our European friends on the call this morning. So those are our general options that we use, and those are common within all the En-ROADS products. But also with the SNS product, you have under tools drainage, you have yet another set of options. Now this group of options uh, are specific to the drainage product. Uh, but before we step into options, you also have one here that is menus. If I touch menus, and menus comes up, you notice that my menu option has, has the ability to do a combined menu, a, a sanitary menu, or a store menu. If you use combined, you have all of the SNS commands available at any time. But if we come in and use only the sanitary menu, and we'll hit apply, and then we'll come up and hit our, uh, our drainage, close that one out of the way for a second, hit our drainage layout command, and it tells me I need to have a uh, file open, so let's open up, go ahead and open up our, our project there. And we will come in and um, open up our layout command, layout command, and you notice for, um, as we selected there, our, um, uh, our sewer, um, that we come in with just manhole, pipes, junctions, and pipe by slope. But if I close out of this, and notice I'll use my hot pick this time for my menus, and I do a storm and hit apply and close, and this time I'll use my hot pick for my layout command, notice now we have channels and culverts. And again, you know, it makes common sense. You don't have open channels in sewer systems unless you live like I do in rural North Alabama, then, then you might have an open channel in your sanitary system. But typically, most of you sophisticated people in the uh, urban areas don't have that luxury that we have here in North Alabama. Uh, but um, it, it divides your menus up so that if your user is a drainage designer only and you only want that person to have the options to be able to put in uh, legitimate drainage structures, then they only get drainage structures. Um, if they are only a, um, a sanitary design engineer, then they only get the options for sanitary. And these um, roll over into the types of zones and areas that you identify for either rainfall or residential flow type uh, scenarios as well. But for this particular, um, since we're doing an introduction, I want to run my combined menus. So I'm going to go back because I want to be able to have access to all of my menu systems. So I'm going to run in a combined mode. And the product does have, in the analysis mode, the ability to do uh, a combined system analysis. So it's uh, very handy in some of the older residential areas um, in the northeast uh, uh, in the northern part of the U.S., and especially uh, in Europe where there are a lot, um, I believe, there's still a lot of combined sewers um, in existence there. So let's drop back now, and let's take a look at our drainage options. So I showed you where it was under Tools, Drainage. This time we'll simply go to my uh, custom menu, and we'll come up to our drainage options. Okay, under our drainage options, this is where we set everything up of how we want the product uh, to run. And this is an area you're going to spend some time uh, the first time that you start running Storm and Sanitary and set all your settings uh, to be what your particular organization may use. And so we start out, and I'll just move from uh, left to right and uh, bottom to top on our um, options menu there. And we'll touch just briefly on each one of these tab sheets as we go through. Uh, of course, the first page there is where we're going to set up our units, where we're using gallons per minute, million gallons per day, cubic feet per second, acre square feet, uh, 
uh, it's real important if you notice the status uh, location here. By default, we set that as at resize. Uh, it's going to assume, if you're in a resize mode, that you are designing a new system. And so when you input flows, when you come in and uh, lay out a network and you start trying to determine the right size for the amount of flows that you put into your system, it's going to resize, it's going to run through an iterative process within the analysis, and it's going to look at um, your, uh, your size required for the flows and slopes that you specify, and it'll naturally come back using Mannings or Colbert White, whichever you're using there, and it'll come back with some oddball dimension, 22.7 inch pipe, and of course nobody makes a 22.7 inch pipe. You notice at the top of this dialog there is a I underbar structures dot dat file specified. That is a file that tells you what are the available structures that you allow to use in your design process. I'll open that file in a minute and show you how to customize that file. But it will go in and select the next available size. Instead of picking a 22.7, it'll look in the in the um, structures dot file dot dat file and pick the next available size, 24, and then it will analyze for a 24-inch pipe to make sure it meets all of your standards that we'll cover in a minute under Design tab for maximum minimum flows, uh, maximum minimum depth, and items like that. Structures IDs. Now, we give you the ability to name a structure about any way you want to name a structure. You can have both a prefix and a counter. Your prefix can be 32 characters long. Uh, if anybody wants to label that much on your pipes. Um, counter, I've taken it up to 10 million. I've, I've never tried to number it 100 million, but uh, um, there's no limit on what it will count to. Um, well, I say no limit. Uh, the developer probably put something out there at 2 billion or something like that. But um, there's no, no limit on what it can count. Uh, it can also uh, do number only. I know a lot of people do not use a prefix or alphanumeric uh, type number, and they use numbers only. And so we give you the ability to do numbers only and then increment by something other than one. So if your pipe numbers incre increment by five because you're going to tie a lot of laterals into it, then that's easy to come in and set that up. And in my particular case, I just came in and just used some natural prefixes like P for pipe, CH for channel, CV for culvert. Um, I'm not very creative. I'm, I, am, I am an engineer, so I'm not real creative. <clears throat> now, styles. Um, Storm and Sanitary actually has two different uh, methodologies for controlling your display. Uh, those of you that are savvy inroads or inroad site users, you're familiar with using um, styles and display of your geometry and contours and things like that. And so we give you the ability uh, within um, Storm and Sanitary to use name styles and name symbologies uh, within Storm and Sanitary for display of any of your pipe network um, uh, entities that you create. But we also uh, allow you to have the ability to um, just have a, a quick and dirty display uh, as well that we will control under a evaluation view. And I will open that one up in a minute and show you where to control that from. So you have, you have two uh, methodologies for controlling your display. And it gives you a lot of flexibility of how you want to uh, use your, uh, uh, your tools as you move along. And we'll continue moving across when we get to pipes. Now, uh, I will spend a little bit more time on pipe, and then it just kind of um, is ditto as we move across channels and culverts as we move across. But if you notice under, again, under your, uh, under your pipes, it looks at your structures.dat files and says, what are my available shapes? And um, we provide the ability to circular, box, elliptical, or pipe arch pipes. Um, and then the material. Um, here is actually read from that structure.dat, so I can actually change those different material types if that is not what I use uh, within uh, my particular uh, standards. And we will go out and actually make that change for you and let you see how to dynamically uh, see the, reflect, uh, the effects of that. This size specified, remember we're in a resize mode, so we need to start with a, um, a default size so that we can do our clearance checks and stuff like that and just give the empirical, uh, empirical operations something to start with in their analysis mode. So it just, um, by default, it will pick the, the one that you specified. It didn't even pick the smallest because I'd come in previously and said I want to start with 15-inch pipe. I specify minimum, maximum slopes. We do not prevent you from laying a pipe out. Uh, less than or greater than those slopes, uh, we will even allow you to run back against the water with the pipes because we do support uh, pump lifts uh, in this. Uh, but we will warn you if you violate a maximum or minimum um, value for slope or cover, and we let you know in the messaging that you have violated that, do you want to continue, and you can continue on if you so desire. 
Now as we move across the channels and things like that, you'll notice it's all very similar to what we talked about for pipes. You get uh, default sizes that you start with, default roughness coil finishes, materials that you can use. Again, these are read from the structures.dat file. Uh, and we walk across and get the same type settings all the way across for our channels, our culverts, uh, different uh, entrances and um, exit uh, values. And also in this um, structures.dat file, it also is where you specify different um, uh, losses for different type of head wall and end wall conditions that you may have uh, based upon your particular design standards. And if we come down toward manholes, again, more of the same type information. Manhole does add a couple additional items for you, uh, such as a drop across. And for some reason, I've got a rather high drop across. Uh, I prefer keeping a, uh, about a three-inch minimum drop across my manholes. And for some reason, um, I had that set at foot. Uh, there is a stand height. Uh, stand height is that height that, um, that your uh, manhole sticks above your grade line. Uh, you may be dealing with a, um, a uh, subgrade condition and you know you're going to get uh, four, six, or eight inches of asphalt or concrete overlay, so you may want to uh, set a stand height of um, uh, three inches so that you will have your um, uh, top of manhole flush with the finished grade, but you're going to lay out relative to a subgrade. Or you could be like me, and I drive a big four-wheel drive, and I hate Corvettes, so I typically stick all my manholes up about six inches, so I can drive over them, but I get all Corvettes that come down my street. A uh, little tip for all you guys that live in rural America. Uh, I don't charge extra for those type tips. Uh, also, maximum depth, again, that is uh, to help you watch for getting a little too deep for your pipes. We don't stop you from going beyond the maximum depth. We just give you a warning that you are, uh, you're, you're having a problem there. And also, when you start dealing with structures, uh, manholes, inlets that are um, uh, rectangular or trapezoidal, then we give you the ability to track those, place those relative to the alignments so that you can always be perpendicular or at some angle or orthogonal parallel to uh, your alignments as you go on through there. Uh, again, very similar settings as you move across to pumps and inlets uh, as well. And again, these are items that you set up as you go through. Uh, again, I won't spend too much time because you get somewhat redundant in those, but uh, it gives you an idea. Now, when you get to areas, areas are pertaining to uh, rainfall. Uh, and when you get to rainfall, you have the opportunity to specify an IDF curve. Uh, we'll go open one of those uh, in a second after we do the structures.dat file. Uh, if you do not have the IDF table, uh, then we uh, provide the standard um, uh, equation because uh, most of your IDF curve tables that you look up either from NOAA or um, uh, USGS uh, within the tables uh, nomenclature they will give you the uh, coefficients used to generate that table so it gives you the ability based upon your time and, um, and in, uh, uh, an intensity to be able to use the coefficients that provided the curve table and, and compute the curve table on the fly for the time of concentration specified in your calculations. So the A, B, and C are, um, are standard coefficients. Um, uh, if you look at NOAA, and I'm not sure whether I've got that one open up or not, but uh, NOAA uh, actually use a B, uh, a B, D, and E uh, as their coefficients, but they, um, they give you the, the formula in the NOAA curve so you can see that uh, A is actually B, B is actually D, and C is actually E, if you can keep up with that. But uh, um, it's, it's well documented. Uh, as well within the help file, so you can drop into the help file at any time and see what each one of the values uh, represent within the help file. Okay, so um, that is for our, um, uh, our areas, and um, except for uh, as we touch in zones, and we're going to be doing a sanitary system here in, uh, in this uh, particular case. Um, and so peaking factor is important for us. And of course, uh, you know, peaking factor is uh, things that you look at for your uh, demographic growth, uh, for your uh, peak systems, such as the Super Bowl flush that we're going to uh, encounter here in just a few weeks. Uh, I hear chuckling in the background, and uh, folks, actually, um, halftime of Super Bowl is our peak flow for the year uh, for both our water distribution and our sanitary systems. And, uh, that, and most of that is controlled when Mr. Fagerman has drank two cases of beer and does all that on his own. But some of the other guys may partake as well. But uh, also, as you notice, you, uh, for your sanitary system, you come in and have uh, infiltration rates where you can specify uh, infiltrations uh, for uh, gallons per day, gallons uh, uh, per acre, um, as well as percent uh, float. So it, um, it gives you the ability to do those as well. 
And then our last one is our design tab as we do there, and this is where you specify your depth over height ratios for um, your partial flow scenarios that you want to do. So I touched on two things I promise you that we come back and take a look at. The first one that I want to take a look at uh, is um, the structures.dat file. Now I have uh, already opened up the structures.dat file uh, in Notepad. And this is the standard structures.dat file that we deliver with the product. And this is one of those that um, I expect your, um, um, your hydraulics guys and your design guys to sit down and do some customization. This is just a standard ASCII file. Uh, as we come down in this ASCII file, the formats are specified ahead. Uh, the uh, semicolon uh, represents uh, comments and not being read uh, by the product. And then you have your materials. So I can come in and add different material types or modify. You know, if I don't use PVC pipes, maybe I use RON pipes. Uh, I can come in and just rename my pipe to, to type RON. Or I can come in and say uh, I actually want to uh, use... Um, uh, I can't spell asbestos, but uh, asbest, maybe I want to use asbestos pipes. You know, I've got an old system that I'm not going to care about environmental conditions, and I can put my own um, own roughness coefficients in there and so forth like that. So I, you know, I can do stupid things, so I can mess it up, and usually I will do one or two stupid things during the course of one of these demos, so I can see that. Now, I can come in and I save this, but it will, and, uh, but it's not dynamically seen within the product. I would have to, if I made this modification and I saved it, I would actually have to uh, exit the product, re-enter the product for it to relink with this file. Uh, I'll show you a way to make it dynamic in just a second, but another thing I want to show you is that as you scroll down in this file and you look at like your circular pipes, and you see a type of pipe that you do not use, if you do not have 72 inch pipes in your area, then you simply just take 72 inch pipes out of your table and you no longer use 72 inch pipes. So you come in and customize your table to meet what is available in your area or maybe what your particular client um, will allow as acceptable pipe sizes. Uh, same thing for your culverts uh, as well as your manholes and material. Uh, all that information is driven from this ASCII file. So you spend a little time uh, setting this up and then you're ready to rock and roll and, and use that. But again, like I said, if you edit it while you're in the product, it is not a dynamic link. So what happens is you have to exit out of the product, re-enter the product, and it resynchronizes with the file. But if you're in a design scenario and you need to come in and change on the fly because you've got a new pipe type that you're going to have to use in this particular project, then what you do in that particular case is you will come in under Tools, um, uh, Drainage, and we're going to look at the Structures file and we come down to a structures file and we give you an online dynamic editor. So if I come down in this particular case and I look at my PVC pipe and I want to edit my PVC pipe and I want to change this to type RON and I hit apply and close close out of this. So now when I come in and take a look in under my uh, uh, my options and I want to look at my pipes and I want to pick my material type Notice I have RON as a material type now for my pipe. So if I use the online editor, uh, then it is a dynamic link within the product, and so I can make those modifications on the fly and do that. Now, um, you might say, well, why wouldn't I want to do all my edits in the dynamic editor? Well, the dynamic editor, uh, if you notice, it can get somewhat cumbersome going through and deleting a lot of different sizes of pipes or adding a lot of different sizes of pipes. So um, if I'm careful with Notepad or WordPad and go out and make my edits, I can do bulk edits in there easier than I can with a dynamic editor. But if I'm doing single edits, uh, edits and I'm in the product running live, then I'm going to come in and do those within the, uh, within the uh, dynamic, dynamic editor provided within the uh, product. Okay? So um, uh, the other thing that I wanted to look at, uh, and this will be the last part of our setup, and like I said, Mr. Fagerman did overload me on what we could uh, possibly get covered in the amount of time we have as I watch the clock. Uh, if you notice here that uh, this is a standard IDF table. Now this is the one that uh, one of them that we provide with the product. And it is basically just the, the duration of the rainfall event, uh, what the rain statistical um, event is, whether it's a one year or a hundred year flood, and then the, um, the flow intensity at that particular time in the event. And that is pretty much a standard uh, file. Uh, every area has its own um, um, statistics that um, drive their own tables. A good source of this, um, uh, if we look back at my uh, my PowerPoint, a 
good source is NOAA for these. Also, USGS is another good source for those. Uh, if you go to NOAA, uh, you will get something that looks like this, which is an actual spreadsheet. Okay, and in the actual spreadsheet, you notice um, in these provided by NOAA, you get two types of uh, uh, two spreadsheets, and and one is um, this particular one is for Idaho City, and uh, this is uh, this is one format that uh, a lot of people use. And then the other tab, and I have not modified this at all. I just pulled this directly from the link from NOAA. And uh, and then the other one, as you notice, is identical to the uh, curve that we provided or table that we provided within uh, SNS. So you can get these from uh, local authorities. Um, I, I went out and looked at a number of the DOT sites, and I noticed a lot of DOTs have their own uh, particular IDF tables uh, created, available on their web pages. I, I looked at six or seven DOTs last night prepping for this to, to see how easy it was to find the IDF tables, and I looked at Kentucky, Pennsylvania, uh, Caltrans, a number of DOTs like that, and I had no problem finding their IDF tables. So if you're a consultant doing work in those areas, it's easy to find the, the IDF tables that, uh, that your client may be using for those. Uh, that pretty well covers um, the setup. Like I said, you spend a lot of time um, getting things set up uh, for your product uh, the first time in, and then you're ready to lock and load and, and get some work done. Okay? So let's go lay out a little bit of work um, and um, actually do something constructive instead of me just talk and, uh, and uh, show you dialogue. So we're going to come in and we're going to uh, lay out some structures. Uh, we support about every type of structure that you can possibly want to lay out within the uh, SNS product, manholes, inlets, pipes. Uh, culverts, pumps, uh, channels, uh, whatever you want to do there. We do it uh, as an uh, interactive methodology as well as bulk. Uh, we do it relative to alignments and or DTMs and provide you ways to check parameters as you do that and, and a number of automation tools when you do that. Now let's drop back over and the first thing that I want to do uh, before we start layout you don't have to have anything at all. If you notice this dialogue across the bottom here um, this is my this is my active uh, my cursor will catch up with me. This is my active surface. Uh, this is my active alignment and uh, active vertical alignment. And um, uh, if you notice, I really don't have anything loaded. Okay, so we're we're just in a uh, empty file. I have actually got a model setting out here in this file that is totally blank. If I do a fit, there should be nothing in that model, and it tells you lower left-hand corner says no elements found. So I actually I can come in and I can start laying in things um, immediately uh, without having any other information. So all I would have to do is go to my Layout tab, and so I open up my Layout tab, and if I want to come in and lay in manholes, then all I've got to do, if I have a known northing and easting elevation, I can key those values in here. So if I have a known uh, northing easting of 10,000, 10,000, and elevation of 500, then I can simply key those in, uh, press Apply, and I'll be off and running with, uh, with no problems. Or I can simply come in, and anytime you see this this little square with a plus in it, that is a target button. I can use that pick button, pick a place in my microstation file, and it comes in and reads the northing and easting exactly at that location. Now notice at the top, I am running in a 2D model space. Okay, so I can run Storm Center is a full 3D product, but I can run in a 2D or 3D space. So that doesn't make any difference to me. I'm keeping everything in a database. I know how long it is. I don't need to know uh, in 3D space what it is because I track both slope and lengths, and I keep all those in the database. So I can simply come in and hit uh, and apply. And if I move my dialog slightly out of the way, I should have had a structure there. Let my dialog box catch up with me here for a second. And let's see here. And I can come in and lay out my structures uh, individually one at a time as I walk through in this by just, just simply data pointing and placing another structure as I go through the product. Okay, And I can do that interactively without any information associated with it. I can also come in and um, uh, as well, and um, if I don't have any information and I want to come in and I've, and I've got uh, microstation just elements out there and I need to use that as an alignment to lay out base by and I may have done some preliminary design within microstation and laid out alignment I don't have to have inroads or inroads uh, site loaded to be able to use that as alignment I can simply come to a file uh, import geometry from graphics 
and I can simply come in and say, well, let's just grab this, and we'll put it in this default project that we're dealing with here. And I simply hit Apply, and it asks me which element I want to use. I select that element, and, uh, and then come back, and that is now an alignment that I can now come back and use that alignment to place my, um, uh, my structures by associated with alignment. So I didn't have to pre-create something in En-ROSE to have it to be able to use it with um, SNS. I can use MicroStation um, graphics and import those as, as, uh, um, as alignments to use. I can also come in, and I actually have a, uh, an item out here. It's called just a contour view. I can also come out here as well and pick up all of these contours in this particular case uh, in a fence. And this is, again, uh, in this particular case, you notice my model space now is 3D. Okay. And if you notice, if you haven't seen a V8 microstation, I'm combining 2D models with 3D models inside of one microstation cube. Okay, so this is true 3D line strings out here in this particular case. So to create my DTM, I can simply come in and do a file import surface, and I can do it by uh, by fence. Load from fence. I'm going to use my element uh, information, and I can call this Bob or whatever I want to call that particular DTM. I can do thinning uh, on the DTM if I so desire. Uh, my seed name will be uh, Contour1. Uh, my style will be, because I'm loading up contours, will be Contour. And I will use um, a uh, point type of Contour. And I can come in and hit Apply. And you notice in the bottom of the page, it's telling me that it is processing. And there's uh, about a half a million um, points in that because I didn't thin. And if I'd been smart, I'd turn that thinning on, and I would thin that out a little bit and got me a little bit smaller. But it's back, so if I go back now and take a look at um, Bob, let's uh, let's scroll down just a little bit here. I hate doing this because I know this slows everything down for you. And let's go to surfaces. Let's go to Bob, and let's look at Bob's properties. And notice I brought in a half a million uh, points, 217 contour fe features, and they're pretty dense uh, contour features, and brought in a half a million points that quick uh, live in front of you. So I guess maybe uh, not using that 10-hour rhythm does show you how quick you can do that. And, and it is the same DTM engine that's used within En-ROADS, so this is immediately available to use in En-ROADS. Or I could have very well had just used En-ROADS um, tools and, uh, and brought one straight in. And as a matter of fact, um, at this point for our layout, that's exactly what we're going to do. So I showed you how to be able to bring in graphics and be able to use those as your DTM or your alignment within the product uh, for layout. But what I want to actually do is I want to come in now and I want to take a look at, uh, uh, at this little uh, subdivision plot that I've got right here uh, and to be able to use. And this actually has already been designed within En-ROADS. And uh, I can do a file open within En-ROADS, but uh, one of the things I like to do a lot of times is I like to come out here and, and reach out and grab. Uh, there's my uh, ALG from En-ROADS. Uh, here is my subdivision DTM, and I've got an original site DTM that I want to use. And I'm just using my control key to do a multiple select. I just grab these, get over here somewhere on the En-ROADS uh, palette, and I just drag and drop them into En-ROADS. And now you notice uh, when I go to geometry, I have got a bunch of alignments loaded. In fact, I can see them here within my drop down here. So that quickly, I came in and just drag and dropped and loaded from the uh, Windows Explorer uh, my um, uh, geometry and my DTMs that I want to use uh, within the session. And I've actually got two DTMs. I've got a subdivision DTM, and if we look at the contours of our subdiv uh, subdivision DTM and apply those, you see it's uh, around the lots. Nope, you got to catch up with me, don't you? There you go. You can see where my lots are fairly flat, my roadways. Uh, if I window in on that uh, a little closer for you, you can see a little bit better what we have there. So let me window in a little closer. And you can see around the edges of my lots and my road, I have contours and all like that. Uh, I don't need to have those contours displayed to be able to use. And so I'm just going to delete those and my DTM still active and able to, to use that. Now, the first one that I want to work around, though, is I want to come in here around this uh, harbor court area here and look at this. Now, I have geometry associated here. This is the harbor court. I'm going to make harbor court my active geometry. I'm going to view my active geometry. And here is my active alignment that I want to use. And I'm going to lay out a couple of manholes down this line. And I also want to uh, look at what my stationing looks like. So I'm just going to come up here and hit my hot pick for stationing and hit apply. And you notice the starting station is at 10, ending station at 19. Okay, but if I come in and turn tracking on, we will notice although my station goes from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, and I turn my tracking on and activate uh, my tracking here, let it catch up with you there for a second, 
and you notice that even though my my tracking is uh, uh, I'm at my top station, my ground line is 63, and I'm going downhill uh, as my screen looks. I'm just downhill to the screen, uh, to the south there, and so I actually need to lay out my my network from high station to low station, um, and but uh, to flow it down at the bottom of, of my system here. Um, also, I am purposely going to make a mistake here. Okay. I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix when you're dumb like me and make mistakes. I'm going to make my active DTM site. This is my original um, site uh, DTM and uh, not the design DTM. So I'm going to lay out my manholes relative to my site. I'm going to mess up. Okay? So our first uh, bit of layout that we want to do is we just want to do some interactive layout. Okay? And so uh, I'm going to um, shrink this dialog down so we've got a little bit more screen space. I am going to uh, window in a little bit tighter up here at the top where we can we get a good view of what we're working with right there in our screen. Let your screen catch up with mine. And now I'm going to use my hot pick for my layout tool. Okay. Now initially I'm going to come in and do my layout um, uh, interactively. Okay. So my first manhole that I'm going to lay out, I'm just going to hit my hot pick and I'm just going to place one just up here close to my alignment. Okay. It immediately comes back, reads the coordinate values from that location and my elevation. And if I hit um, uh, and apply, Notice I get a little green circle just under the 19 up there. That is my first manhole. Okay. Uh, now my next one that I want to place, um, I know where I want to place it. I want to place it down here around station at station 16, but I want to place it at an offset to the uh, left of my alignment of 10 foot. So how do I do that exactly? Well, I use my hot pick button, but because I have an alignment active, I can come down in my screen now. Uh, and put my focus in my microstation browser and I key in SO which is station offset equal and I want to put in there uh, 1600 which is my station and a comma minus 10 so that puts it to the left at station and I hit a return it brings back my dialog it places um, the exact elevation and northern easting at that location uh, within my dialog box and I can hit apply now when I started that command if I had turned my uh, add connecting pipes on, I would get my pipe at the same time, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that off. We'll come back and reconnect that up, okay? And so we'll hit and apply, and if you notice right by my cursor there, there's another small green circle for my next manhole, okay? And uh, then we will come down a little bit lower in our, um, in our plan here, and let's just go ahead and place another manhole approximately right here and hit apply, and you should see that in just a second. Uh, it's taking a little second for it to scroll and catch up with me. I got a little bit ahead of you, okay? And so now you see my next manhole, and then we will scroll down just a little bit further, and we will put our last manhole here. And your screen will take just a second to uh, to catch up with me. Apply. There you go. And so now we've got four or five manholes in there that we want to connect up, okay? And now we want to come back up uh, toward the top of our network up here, and your screen will catch up in just one second. And we see the top of our network. Now we want to place our pipes. Now this is where when we start placing our pipes, when we use our pick buttons next to ID, SNS is smart enough that it's when I pick close to it, it grabs that pipe. I accept it. It comes in and feeds me that pipe information, and I get ready to uh, select the uh, the next one. I simply notice I get a rubber band. I select the next pipe and accept it, and hit apply. Draws my pipe in there, and you will see it come in and look at there. Hmm comes right through that uh, that area there, doesn't it? Well, I probably didn't want that manhole at that location, but I want to keep that pipe connected up to it. Let's go ahead and place our next couple in there first, okay? We'll zoom out a little bit and scroll down just a little bit where we get our next two pipes. And notice that in my pick button, it automatically knew that that last manhole is going to be my next upstream. So now all I got to do is grab my downstream and accept my downstream. And you're caught up with me. I accept it and hit apply. And if you can see the blue line come on the screen there, and then we will grab our last manhole down toward the bottom of our screen there, and accept it, and hit apply. Now we have our pipelines in, our manholes in, but I've got this one problem toward the top where I'm coming across a uh, building area of a slab. So how do I fix that? And I'm actually going to jump ahead of my slides just a little bit to fix this, because that does look real ugly. So I'm going to come over here. And under drainage, you have a uh, structure, move structure. I also have this over under my um, 
uh, uh, hot picks on my custom toolbar as well, but just show you where that comes from. I'll grab that, and it comes in and says, you want to move it uh, on that site relative to that alignment. How do you want to move it? You want to track it along the surface? Uh, do you want to track along the alignment for uh, angle in case it's a rectangular or trapezoidal shape? Um, do you want to track it on offset? I always want to hold that offset, okay? Well, maybe I do want to always hold that 10-foot offset on that, okay? And I could also just move it along structure or uh, connect it to an existing structure. So I'm going to hold that 10-foot offset. I like that 10-foot offset. I hit an apply, and we're going to come up and grab, and matter of fact, we're going to window in. Oops, went the wrong way with that. We're going to window in where you can see that just a little bit better there. See that now on your screen, okay? And I'm still in there. It's asking me to identify a structure. I'm going to identify that structure. And when I grab it, notice it's holding that. Now, regardless of where I move my cursor to, it holds that little green circle at 10-foot offset to the left of my alignment. So I can back that up. It holds my 10-foot offset. I get it outside of my construction area of my lot. I accept it. And if we close that dialog box out of the way, you can see how it moved uh, my manhole, but also updated my pipes as well. And so it's dynamically linked, so I can do all my moves and everything associated with it along that way. So that's kind of a you know a kind of uh, interactive way to lay out pipes. That gives you a lot of capability to be able to uh, to uh, use things exactly as uh, as you so uh, so desire. But maybe I want to come over and look at uh, one of my other areas. Okay, and uh, I'm going to shrink this down out of my way momentarily, and we'll zoom out just a little bit on this one. And this I'm actually in a different model now. Okay, and uh, with this model, I'm going to uh, actually come in and lay out multiple junctions along this alignment here. Okay, and again, my flow is from top of screen down, so I'm going to go from, from upstream to downstream. Window back in just a little bit here where we can see this. And move that up just a tad where we can see everything we got there. Now I want to take a look at doing uh, multiple junctions, okay? And I'm going to come in under multiple junctions. I'm going to place manholes, and I'm going to come in and lay manholes out, and I'm going to start near the top of this. I have no idea what that station <laughs> is, so my top is going to be, and I am uh, actually need to use a different uh, active alignment. I'm going to use this back street court, which is this alignment here. You see my cursor slide there, okay? And I'm going to come, it automatically reads the length and starting and ending stations of the alignment, but I want to start my manholes about there, and I'm going to end my manholes uh, somewhere down in this area right there, okay? And I'm going to set those offset a little bit along my alignment. We'll set a little 10-foot offset, and we'll set those at about a 200-foot interval down through there. And we're going to automatically connect up all of our pipes as we go, and we want the product to compute the elevation of the pipes based upon our defaults that we set for minimum cover and our DTM. So I'm going to come in, and I've, I've set my parameters. I hit Apply. And that quickly, if you can see, and if we window in just a little bit tighter where you can see some of that, that quickly, it came in and put in my whole network at a 10-foot offset from the top of my alignment to the other. And your screen is just a tad behind mine. There you go. And you can see where um, uh, it laid that in there from the top to the bottom of my network. Okay. And I can come in now and add in my other structures through the interactive layout down here and tie in around the loop to the left and do those type of items, but I've already showed you how to do that. So that's, that's pretty easy to do um, to get that. So um, let's, um, that's using interactive layout, using bulk layout, so there are some speed tools to be able to lay that out and, and do some special things in there. Um, now what I would like to do, and I've also showed you some of the, uh, the manipulations as well. Let's take a look at our, um, at our PowerPoint here for a second. Um, as I came in, we laid out my bulk. We laid it out by uh, relative alignments and DTMs. We used some of the automation tools. I did a little bit too good of a job laying out, so we missed any uh, where I violated covers and stuff like that. Uh, maybe I can uh, show that to you as I do make some other mistakes here. Okay, and um, also for network modifications, I showed you moving the structures in the plan view. Uh, let's go create us a profile, create us a profile, and um, do some moves and profiles. I've shown you the associativity with the product, and then I'm going to show you how I correct where I use the wrong DTM on this as well. Okay, so let's come back over to our, our storm and sanitary, and um, let's come in and change our view back to our harbor court view. Uh, this is the one that we want to use for our profile. And we want to window out just a little ways on this one. 
and I'm just going to get part of my network there and what I want to do then is I want to come in using my profile tools I want to come in and go do create a profile so I'm going to create a profile and um, I'm going to um, turn on both my site and my subdivision DTMs and uh, my source on this is going to be uh, my network and I'm going to profile from my furthest upstream structure but I'm not going to get my entire network I'm just going to come down to that pipe there at the bottom of the screen and use that one so I'm just going to get a couple pipes and uh, you notice I've got an oddball dimension for extend axis I, I want to have my axis begin uh, and not split my manhole on the axis okay now I could have uh, run this along an alignment but I didn't um, take care not to exceed the extents of my alignment in my interactive one so I'm going to use my network as my alignment now if there's a case that I may want to come back and reuse this network alignment at some later date at this point I can give that network uh, uh, alignment uh, a name and it will store it in the inroads ALG as a network uh, alignment uh, that I can uh, later use and maybe even annotate station uh, values and, and things like that uh, the rest of this is standard inroad stuff for setting up how I want my profile to use uh, to look I'm going to hit apply I'm going to open up another view stretch my view out a little bit here and let's place our profile right there and let's close our profile view and let's come in and window in on our profile and you can see where we've got our profile in there and we can see where we I've got a couple little problems associated with this okay now my first problem and I probably need to window in just a little bit tighter where you can see where my first problem is well, my first problem is right there where I, I uh, remember where I said I used default elevations in DTM so that's where I use default elevations in DTM and notice I got a little jump in that pipe and I really don't want that okay so just like I have a move in plan view and I won't turn graphic group off before I do this one I also have under drainage uh, structure move in profile view now I've also got that hot pick over here for that as well but I want to show you where it is in the menu system and I want to come in and I want to move this end of this pipe and bring it down some okay so I'm going to grab this end of this pipe and I can and the way that the move works on the pipe is that if I'm uh, tag on the uh, left one-third of the pipe it's hinged around the right end of the pipe if I tag on the right one-third of it it's hinged around the left end of the pipe if I tag in the middle third then the pipe moves parallel okay but I tagged on this left hand end and I'm going to accept and notice I get a move dynamic move where I can come in and move that okay now if I had selected my my manhole instead I could grab my manhole and notice my prompts in my lower left hand corner it says accept reject I accept and it says okay data point to associate pipes reset to move rim only if I want to move the pipes a data point and I get a rubber band to move the entire the entire uh, network there associ associatively okay if I hit a reset and identify that again and accept it and this time I'm going to do a reset on my mouse and notice I only get the manhole that moves and the pipes don't move okay so I can come in and do those type of moves and adjustments within my network as well and it is dynamic back to the database so everything is dynamically updated but notice on this is that my manholes are on the green line that was my original ground line and they're not supposed to be there they should have been on my design here I messed up okay so now what I want to do is I want to go back and I've got under drainage I've got under network I got here. Here we go. Move network. Find it quicker under my hot picks. Okay. Now this time I want to move my entire network. Okay. Now I can move it relative from one alignment to another alignment if I need to if I had the wrong alignment. But in this case I want to move it from the surface. Okay. And I messed up on it. I shouldn't have had it at site. I should have had it at subdivision. Okay. Now I can hold the distance from rim to connected pipes. Uh, let's do that. Um, it messes up my network a little bit but it shows you the effect of it real well and I'm going to uh, use that and it says what network so I need to identify a network uh, I need to identify it out in my plan view and it's going to anything in that network I'm going to move and I'm going to hit uh, and apply it tells me successful completion so let's go back and under our, our evaluation profile uh, update drainage network and it grabs that one and notice that my pipes go to the green line I hit and apply and notice now 
and let's refresh our view get rid of some of the notice now my network has been moved relative to my other DTM okay and so that easily what if I come in and I have a modification to my DTM I can move my entire network relative to the change design change that I had uh, it can also come in and uh, if you do like I did and use the wrong DTM in this case you know I used uh, the, the pre-construction DTM and, and used the wrong one maybe perhaps you used a um, uh, preliminary DTM and came back and had a final DTM and you need to raise everything to that so it's very easy to uh, correct and uh, move the items that you've got within that and um, let's go back to our PowerPoint for a second and so that kind of gives you an idea for move structures in plan and profile associatively uh, how to update for alignment and DTM changes and um, and we also have within that at any point I can come in and do a edit review either from the plan view or profile view and look at all the information associated uh, with our network okay and so I can come in and actually make changes here on my network and hit apply or come in and fix it and make it a fixed structure here if I know I have to use in this particular case due to clearances an 18 inch pipe I can fix that and do that and pack that in that like I said when I began uh, Mr. Fagerman over defined what we could get covered in an hour's time I'm looking to clock I am running well out of time so let's take a look at our um, uh, our PowerPoint and see where we got to and we will schedule a part two to this and I will do a part two to this one but let's take a look. I was also going to uh, design the network, which we did not get to. Show you how to do some uh, design reporting and um, some query and changing of attributes and changing structures based upon some designs. Uh, we will pick that up on our next uh, storm and sanitary section. Um, uh, and again, uh, this is more of the query and reporting that we're going to do. And then things that I did not, I knew for sure I wouldn't be able to get to to show you that we're barely scratching the surface on the product is I have not touched the hydro tools, the storm uh, uh, tools, because I did all sanitary in this particular case. We didn't do detention ponds. We do have a very good um, remote lecture out there on detention ponds already that did not change in H7, so that is a good one for you to go and review from the uh, resource center. Uh, we have things that uh, we can show you in the future for annotation, culverts, channels. Uh, something that is new in the H7 is the ability to see your structures in cross-section. And, um, and, uh, and have those reflected in your inroach cross sections. Uh, we will pick up yet probably a third or fourth um, SNS87 on that one, and that will get into the utilities area as well. Um, this was a very brief introduction. It is so much in this product to be able to cover within a 54-minute uh, uh, time frame that I've touched this, but this gives you a start. Uh, I hope that there are some um, tools there that you can use and you can view this and come back. Uh, we will work, I'll work with Wes and David and get part two scheduled so you don't forget this part before we get started. And uh, that ends my time for the day.